Welcome, Nivi and Tutti. Great to have you here. And congratulations to your new publication about the role of space systems in nuclear deterrence. It's an interesting topic and we will dive right in. Nivi, I will start with you. Can you tell us what do you mean by a space system in this context and why is it important to understand the role of these systems in nuclear deterrence? Thank you, Steph. So space systems are comprised of several components. It's not just the satellite in space, there's also the ground segment, which is comprised of maybe receivers and satellite dishes. And then there are also data links which connect the space segment to the ground segment. Every one of these, seg every one of these segments can be the subject of attack. And space systems are used for civilian and military purposes, as well as nuclear and non-nuclear missions. What this means is attacks on these systems or even perceived threats to these systems can spark escalation, including possible nuclear use. While there's been considerable analysis on the potential for conventional conflicts to escalate to the nuclear level, in comparison, when it comes to space systems, the developments in the space domain, how these can shape escalatory dynamics and contribute to the potential for nuclear escalation, that remains rel relatively less understood. And so what we seek to do in our paper is by bridging space and nuclear perspectives is bring this analysis forward. And so we examine the role of space systems in nuclear deterrence practices for China, Russia, and the US. We focus on these states uh, because each of these three states possess nuclear weapons, integrate space systems into their nuclear deterrence practices, and they also have counter space capabilities. These capabilities can hold rival space systems under threat they can essentially they mean capabilities get, that can damage, disrupt, disrupt or destroy space systems. And so these states are they risk being pulled into into confrontation with each other mm. because of the potential for regional conflicts and their underlying strategic competition. Mm. They use space systems for different functions. These include missile early warning, navigation, communications and intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance. But an important point to note is that the strategic significance of these, of these systems can also differ depending on the state. And so we need to understand what value they have, what functions they play, in order to understand escalation risks. Thank you, Nevi. That's uh, really a complex uh, topic to look into. And uh, Tuti, if I turn to you, um, can you tell us <coughs> more about how then nuclear weapons rely on these space systems? Where's the connection? Yeah, the most important role that space systems play in nuclear deterrence has to do with nuclear command and control, especially early warning and strategic communications. Uh, and early warning satellites, they are equipped with uh, infrared sensors that can detect missile launches. So as the name suggests, er early warning satellites can uh, provide warning for a nuclear attack. This is seen as especially important for those nuclear armed states that rely on, um, on launch on warning postures, meaning that they are ready to retaliate a nuclear first strike before the adversary missiles re reach their destination. Uh, and at least in the United States, uh, satellites are also used to transmit presidential orders for nuclear weapon use. In addition, information um, satellites provide inf information on targeting and guidance for various kinds of weapons, including nuclear weapons. And um, in your paper, you mentioned that states are increasingly developing what is called counter space capabilities um, to attack rival space systems. So it's really a lot um, in space happening. So why are the states developing those? Yeah, there are, of course, many kinds of motivations, including strategic competition and status considerations. But from the point of view of nuclear deterrence, one key driver, at least for um, Russia and China, has been their threat perceptions related to US missile defenses. Mm -hmm. uh, on the one hand, uh, <coughs> these countries uh, are concerned that missile defenses might weaken their nuclear deterrence meaning that uh, they could um, undermine their ability to respond to a nuclear first strike. 
Um, and in particular, they are concerned that the United States might in the future develop space-based missile defenses. And these kinds of space-based missile defenses, they don't exist, but it's like a hypothetical threat that could make uh, the interception of uh, long-range missiles uh, significantly more uh, effective. And uh, counter space capabilities could undermine missile defenses because missile defenses rely on early warning satellites for the early detection of, of missile launches. On the other hand, uh, strategic missile defenses could uh, themselves be used as anti-satellite weapons because uh, um, these systems, they can target uh, missiles flying in space. So instead of missiles, they could be targeted against satellites orbiting the Earth. So missile defense provides a latent uh, capability, uh, latent counter space capability. And from this perspective, it, it could be said that um, efforts to develop counter space capabilities are kind of a uh, response to this, this mm -hmm. latent capability. Mm -hmm. But Nivi, if I turn back to you, sort of the key takeaways from your work, what, what is really the essence which we need to bring with us? We point out that there are a number of factors that affect the vulnerability of these systems to attack. It, that, that can change depending on the type of system, what function it serves, what orbit it's launched in, uh, what protective measures have been taken for that system, and even the kind of capability used to, used to attack or disrupt it. But perceived or actual exploitation of these vulnerabilities can undermine strategic stability among the three states, possibly contributing to the risk of, of nuclear use. And that is what we try to highlight in this paper. Only by understanding this can we then identify escalation risks and th then more effectively design risk reduction measures accordingly. As we covered a little bit already, early warning satellites, uh, possible attacks or disruption of these, or even threats to these, can spark direct nuclear escalation. But in addition to that, there's also the scope for broader escalatory spirals among these, among these states. And that means escalation could be deliberate or inadvertent, um, and there's a large amount of, of scope for, for misperceptions and miscalculations. And so what we're hoping to do in this paper, in this project, is point out the need to more clearly monitor developments in space, how they impact escalatory dynamics, and what this means for us, how we can more effectively think about measures to reduce these risks. Just then from the outside, as a final perspective, what I took away from the paper was that there is this vulnerability, uh, the satellites. Do you see a higher risk for an accident now that we rely on space systems, which is due to a misunderstanding in this field? Or is that something which we can handle with today's technology? That might be difficult to predict, uh, but there is definitely scope for, I would say, that, would, that may be falling under the scope of inadvertent escalation. And we are exploring that more closely in our next paper, which is as the second stage of our project. And we have something to look forward to. Thank you.